Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. Uh, for you, for those of you who are on Zoom, um, please, if you've got questions, go ahead and ask directly. Um, I can't get my Facebook um, to work. So I'm going to ask uh, Angela, Mark, Giovanni, um, if they see questions to, to just uh, uh, translate the question, if you would be so kind. Today, we're going to talk about the watercolor sticks. Um, it's World Watercolor Month, so we're going to go over watercolor sticks. I've asked um, uh, the artists that are usually with me on Thursday and Friday to show you some uh, mixes to show you and explain how they use the sticks. Um, they're, they're more than just a, um, they're not really a drawing tool. They're way more than that. So let's go over some of the basics of the sticks and then we'll see some of the sticks in action. So I'm gonna put this down, go up with this. It's down. So there's 51 sticks, and this is what the sticks look like. Then we'll see a small um, movie. So these are the sticks, and the sticks are um, pigment with gum arabic. They're very, very, very um, condensed. Um, they have the same pigment. They have the same binder, which is gum arabic, that our tube has. Uh, they have an incredible amount of pigment. We have 51 different colors and we're coming out with 11 new ones. So they're, they're pretty phenomenal. And some of the artists today are gonna to show you how they use them. So I call it a pen in your hand and they're easy to travel with. They're easy to take paint off the top. Um, you can do wet into wet. You can do it. Just about anything you could do with a watercolor tube, you can do with the sticks. And probably um, some other uh, creative things that you can't do with, with the tubes. Some Penny Horsley's colors today, some of her sticks. She has quite a few sticks. Oh, so there's her sticks. I'll be showing you those today. And then some of the artists will be using other colors just to show you how the sticks work. Some more of the sticks. Some more of the sticks. This, for example, is Quinn Coral. And this is Raw Sienna. So the sticks are um, less than a series one tube of paint. And yet within the stick line, the pigment, there's one, two, three, and four. Um, so it's a, it's a really good from a, from a price point. It's, it's, it's actually quite excellent. So with that, Ethel, can we see the um, slideshow? Yeah, sure. So Please. we start with the video okay. and then we proceed with uh, images. I have to switch to full view a moment, please. Okay, let's stop share first. Do it again.
proceed with the stills. Would you like to take us from here, John? Yeah, so this is the colors that we have in the sticks on your watercolor chart. Um, it would have, for example, an S that would, would that would say that this particular color is a stick. So if you have the color chart, it's easy to find which ones are in 15 mil, what are in five mil, what are in half pans, and what are in sticks. Okay, would, so this is what they look like. To go back to that one, Ethel. Pick one more. One. Yeah. So there's the uh, watercolor sticks. These are Gio's set, by the way. His first so set. Giovanni is watching right now, and these are his sticks. Some's watching. So this is what they look look like when there are um, some waters added to them. Not this one, the previous slide. And so I just went to the laboratory out in production to take um, a picture. This is, um, these are tubes being dried in our dryer. The dryer can hold uh, probably 37, 37 different uh, racks of, of sticks. And it can take anywhere from um, 14 to um, 30 plus days to dehydrate. We want to pull the, we're trying to slowly pull the moisture out of the stick. So it's a very long process. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like inside of the, um, the evaporator. And so if we look at the next picture. So this is uh, the sticks going to the cutting station and they're all cut by hand. And then once they're cut to size, they're going to go through QC. And that's the next video, next uh, slide. And so you can see, if I would have taken this with uh, less blurry, uh, this is the stick after it's been QC. You can see where uh, the operator has been putting them into um, uh, uh, a cavity. Um, so those are all verified. The ones that don't make it past QC are just used in the uh, in the next run. So we. Uh, it's, uh, we try to utilize everything that we make uh, just to fully utilize it. You have another photograph? Yeah, or is that we do. So just like this is some swatch sticks. And the next couple of slides are application. Like this is some swatch sticks. And the next couple Let's of see whose are, microphone is on. Swatch stitch. Okay, it's gone now. Thank you. This is Rajat's um, artwork. Rajat is with us today. Um, I think he will be more than happy to answer questions and share his experience about the sticks as well later. And I have another image, John, where we could see, we could directly play from Rajat's Instagram account. Um, just to see how Rajat enjoys the sticks like a pan in the hand. So let's play the video direct from his Instagram. Can we all see that? Yeah. Yes, we can. Thank you. This one's just a couple of seconds. Um, you may follow Rajat's Instagram account after the session today for more of his um, art activities with sticks. There. And just a couple of few more slides. Can we see this now on the PowerPoint? Yes. 
So we have here, this is Geo's artwork using just sticks. And that's it. That's the end of the slide, John. Thank you, Ethel. John, your mic is on mute. Um, we don't hear you. How about now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Too many buttons. <laughs> uh, so I had to turn the Facebook off just because I'm getting a really bad echo. So I'm going to ask um, if uh, you would just translate the questions being asked from Facebook. For Zoom, you can ask the questions directly. So the stick is a very versatile way to um, have color. We're going to watch Giovanni and Giovanni is going to show you how he takes color off the stick and how he uses it. Then we will go to Rajat and Rajat's going to show you how he uses it. Then we'll go to Angela and Angela's going to show how she uses it. And then we'll just say Mark, if Mark's using the sticks, maybe Mark will show us how he does it. Um, and then any viewers watching, you can also show. So we get different perspectives of using the stick. So with that, Giovanni, can you be the first, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Now is the first um, explain in my entire set of uh, watercolor sticks. Watch is a beautiful, beautiful color, and the in the and the end of the sheet is uh, the the new color coming soon. Uh, I think in November, John. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, the, the new color is neutral tint, lavender, iridescent electric blue, pearlescent white, ivory black, Prussian blue, spring green, olive green, burnt yellow ochre, Mayan orange, and carmine. It's my, my favorite is neutral tint, <laughs> everything. And then um, show you the, the new color explained in, in this. Sheet. I use the 100% cotton paper. And my personal experience with the, the stick is um, the first I use the stick for the details in my painting, my hyper realistic style. And, and uh, I use one color directly for my small brush. This is a double zero brush, but I use the 20 zero brush. Is perfectly for the tile direct because with a few parts of water and a few parts of gamma rabbits is a pure pigment for a perfect detail line and small writing and my sign my my work and uh, another use for my my painting. I use the watercolor stick for create my, for example, in this case, my black black ground. I use the a little drop of water with the dropper, and dissolve the stick in a ceramic cups. It's a little grinder for the cups, and after the masking, the my my work, I use the sea sponge. It's a perfect connection, sea sponge and watercolor sticks for my black background. And after, for example, 10 layers of the sea sponge and watercolor sticks, I complete the Whole white hole directly with the sticks. Oops, sorry. For example, in this mold. And I create my black background texture. I don't like, for example, the flat black, but I prefer the, the movement black. And I use various color for the black background. I use the grise, for example, with the 
Italian Venetian Red or Shadow Violet. And Shadow Violet for the cool black background, Italian Venetian Red for the, the warm. Is a perfect tool for this because I have a pure, pure pigment in, uh, in my hand. Uh, I remember I is very easy to traveling for this object and very, very funny. And the show the new color, for example, the spring green and the bark yellow ochre, the very beautiful color. Now I use it in the plastic bag because It's important for the artist. This one is not a pastel, but it's a very, very pure watercolor in the hand. It's very, very beautiful. It's very, a, a huge pigment. This is Bartial Hawker. And this is Spring Green. to all the new 11 color. The stick is, one stick is a, similar to three out pen. And the, the versatile use I use with the big brush, small brush, the rigger brush, flat brush is a very versatile. Is only one drop of water. It's a very pigmented. It's perfect. Okay, show the, another color. My preferred color is neutral tint. Favorite. Because the neutral tint is a, the connection for me for any, any, all the color. Only one drop of color. It's very, very good pigmented. It's strong to light. It's only one drop. Perfect for plein air, for, for the studio. But for the detail, I have a. Um, with one stick, I um, created 10 work. <laughs> because I have many, many pigments. Very show of, for example, wet on wet. Similar to this only. So Giovanni, I know you use the, uh, use the tubes as well. What, what, what do you find most useful about the sticks? Mm, it's, it's, it's better for me because the, the little difference because I, I have the, the stick is a, is a hard, it's not fluid similar to, to tube. It's, it's more similar to half pen. I started my work uh, 13 years ago with the half pen and my, my heart life changed with the tubes and now the sticks, I, I come back, I come back, but uh, I come back uh, is, is better <laughs> because uh, the, the, the pigment is very, very strong directly, very directly strong uh, immediately. It's better for me. Excellent. Yeah. So, the, yeah. Thank you very much. And You're so welcome. Giovanni is going to continue. And Rajat, can you show us how some uh, how you use the sticks? Hi, John. Thank you for inviting me. Well, these are wonders. These are nothing but wonders. See, for me, I am using sticks. Uh, last four decades, I was using tubes. Then the colors are soluble and all this. But once I found, I got a series of sticks. I have used earlier one or two sticks. Uh, it is, there are a few 
plus points are there. It is while traveling, it's so good, it's so convenient to travel with these colors, the range of colors. And there is no uh, glycerin or that sort of thing, so dried up. Its pigments are good, colors are vibrant. So for me, I mean, I think uh, once I got this and I now I'm stick to the sticks. I got hooked up. So I am using only sticks. So, so if you see that there are from the evening, I was making some, some work, some of my work. Is it visible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, now it is. It kind of moves a little bit. Is it? Yeah, now it is. It is? Okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> so mostly nowadays what is happening, even I'm, I'm mixing the colors through this one. So, if you use, uh, see, I, uh, I just did that and I was doing while talking, Giovanni was this thing. So, I was just making this baby kingfish so so it is so easy to for me it's like if you see that i'm using i'm mixing the colors also into uh, sticks itself so earlier i do i have used palettes but here so those who have not used sticks I will suggest, please try just once so that they will have an idea why um, we are recommending artists to use sticks. This is absolutely brilliant. If you see that the pigment, if you see that the depth of the color, vibrancy of the color is That's so interesting. I think last time that you were demonstrating, we were watching you uh, mix right from stick to stick. And I think that so many people found that as I find it so very interesting. Okay. So this is, once you are, you got the test, it's something like once you got the test, I don't think you will be able to go back to, you know, I mean, at least as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to go back to uh, tube anymore because I'm, it is so easy for me. It is like even the a bigger background also I'm making earlier, I used to make pour the color and I'm directly using this, if you see that. I'm taking from this sticks and I'm using the color. So I will suggest all my fellow artists, they must once try this. So Sue is asking, do sticks contain more dense pigment than pans? The pans, so the sticks are larger than the pan, but if you did it weight to weight, the pans would have more pigment because they have less water. So it goes the tubes, which are which are aqueous, then the sticks, which have probably about 12%, and then the pans, which have less than that. And then we have powdered, powdered watercolor, which have 0% water, they have none. Um, so the stick is about equal to roughly uh, four to five half pans. It, it, it's just a a huge amount of pigment is the only way to hold them together because um, there is no wax there's uh it's just it's a uh, pigment with gum arabic or the two major constituents right absolutely so this is how basically i was just doing so now this is so it's it's absolutely convenient and moreover i mean like you can as as far as i'm concerned i'm so acquainted now 
to holding the sticks in my finger. Like earlier, I have to pour the color, you know, using that thing from a palette and all. But here now I'm mixing the color in my hand itself. So it is, uh, for me, it is like really convenient. Um, I'm asking, and this is a sheer insist to my all, my this, one should definitely try out sticks. The colors are so, it's vibrant, water soluble, is easy water soluble. It's not, you have to, you know, uh, rub, rub, then only the color will come out. It's not at all. So I've done in front of you only just, I'm just touching that, I'm taking, just touching and immediately the colors are coming. Look at this. So this is, this is the beauty of this particular product. Sean? Awesome. Yes. Now we have a comment from Facebook. This is from Kathy De Allegri. She said, very nice presentation. Will these sticks withstand outdoor desert heat well for plein air painting? Absolutely. I guess. So, so Rajat says absolutely. He, he lives in high heat. So the, uh, the heat doesn't uh, affect the sticks um, unless it's super, super hot. Um, but the uh, humidity, you might want to use, because you see at, the, at Rajat's feet, he has the uh, sticks in the plastic enclosures and um, Giovanni has plastic enclosures, yeah. which works very well for high, for high humidity. Yeah. So I'm using the sticks in these plastic boxes where it's really convenient for me to keep the thing and because it's highly dry. So there's no problem for this thing. And it's so convenient for plain air. One can easily take this thing. It takes lesser space. It's a lesser weight and more impact. So you can create more value. You can put more value to your natural creation by doing the painting than anything else. Awesome. So Stephen says, Steve from Phoenix, I've had them out in 100, 110 degree summer heat. Man, that's hot. And they're fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not an issue at all. That's certainly it is not an issue. One can easily use that. Yeah, awesome. yeah. The, the, the plastic case is perfect because, um, for example, when I use directly without touch my with my hand, the, the plastic case maintain the humidity. Is a is a similar to I uh, use the the spray in a in a pallet. Is is perfect. It's perfect for the contain and maintain the the humidity of sticks. Right. Awesome. Okay. So thank you, Rajat. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. Come back to you both. Vesna, can you show us how you're using them? Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, I, I really don't know what to say more than all of you guys said about sticks. They are really impressive. They hold such, such a great big amount of pigment. And as you guys said, you sh everyone should consider this as a pure pigment, like uh, not, not as, a, as a, um, other types of sticks that we have been draw drawing with them directly. Uh, usually I paint with with uh, <clears throat> tubes, but right now, uh, while all of you guys were uh, explaining about sticks, I just did some of the tests of different uh, colors. I don't know if it is visible in my to my iPhone. It I is. really love the colors; they are so beautiful, so amazing. Uh, one of the uh, reasons that artists should consider uh, using them more often is the reason that it's very, very easy to handle them for plain air and uh, by traveling and so on. So I really consider and uh, would, would suggest to any artist to use them more often. At least as Rajat and uh, Gio said, everyone should try them and they will see that they are really magical. They are really amazing. And for, and for using them to mix the colors, they seem similar to me as I uh, mix colors with my um, tubes. And you can also 
time by time when I do some of my abstract paintings, I also leave the structure of the drawing just by itself, just like this. And then you can also play with some drops of water to do different kinds of variations to get some graphical content, maybe not just painting content like this, which I really find it useful in my, in my abstract paintings. Brilliant. Best. So, yeah. Thank you, Best. Hearing, hearing me? Yeah. Any questions? Maybe, maybe any questions? I. And I really just can can wait for the new colors because I have seen they are really nice. I also have here a few of them. I tried lavender. It's really beautiful. It's an amazing one. Yeah, there are a few more new colors that are coming up. We Eleven, the... right? John? Yep. Yeah. Everybody yeah. said 11 will be. Awesome. All right, Besnik, thank you. And then thank you, you're very welcome. And Gabriel, can you show us what you've been doing? And Gabriel, is that done with sticks? Wow. This is a plein air painting, and this was just done while I was waiting for my ladies to show up to paint. Um, so this is just a nice little quick, uh, you know, piece that actually turned out really nice, and it got uh, into a show, a jerk show, and it was just one stick and one travel brush. That's all it took to make this nice little uh, monochromatic uh, piece here uh, in San Diego. And I too, I will, uh, I like putting them in here. And just like, uh, I like doing, getting some water. I'll even maybe even spritz it here and just giving it some life with some water. And um, just like Sumi ink, maybe you can just do a nice little like uh, figure, you know, like real quick, uh, just kind of thinking about like uh, what you're gonna do. And today I was down at Dog Beach and maybe there's this guy here and he's got his favorite little dog with him, you know. And he's uh, maybe meeting a lady. And I mean, just have fun with them. Just get out there, um, get outside, get a couple of sticks, just start with a couple of them and see what you can do. And I literally will take like all 52 plus uh, water sticks all in here. And when I have a good idea of what I'm gonna paint, I can pull out the ones and then drop this in my backpack. But yes, I have my favorites that I like to uh, just keep in here. Uh, my favorites are uh, the Moon Glow. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about Moon Glow. I can do so much with that color. And all these colors, uh, in, at least in the States, doesn't matter. So for instance, Moon Glow is a series number two. And we got series number ones. And there is, here we go, Mayan Orange. It's a series number three. And what's cool about that is they're all the same price. I think here they retail about $11. And that's pretty nice. There was a couple of colors. My wife would just be a little worried about uh you know and now those colors are in six and so but yeah just get out there and i mean you can have a little sketchbook and you can get out there and just practice you know like some figures uh doing something and um like what Jacques said you know you're just working from like pure pigment you know this guy's maybe he's got his bicycle with him you know and he's walking with his bicycle uh, going somewhere. And uh, I like this. It's, uh, you know, for urban sketching or for plein air, it's really up to you. You just got to get out there and get the mileage in. 
Awesome. Gabriel, thank you Gabriel. very much. Can you I bet. Ask a question, Gabriel, please? Of course. Um, one other time that you, you showed us a workbook that you had spent time every morning doing practicing with the sticks when you first got them and I found that yeah. so inspiring that got me started and I got my own book do you have that at hand to to show with that because that was so enriching uh I actually do uh one second it's just in the other room here I found that got me started on the sticks and um, it was just built my confidence with doing different things and um, it was really fun above everything. Yeah, so every morning I would just get up. That's a wonderful question. Um, every morning I would just get up and I would pick a few colors and I would just play. I would get my cup of coffee and I would just play and see what some of these colors, because there were some colors that I had never even played with before. And, uh, you know, you get out there and just allow yourself to play. And when you're doing this, while you're out plein air painting, you can go, oh, hey, I can mix that. And um, this is just getting in some mileage, just mm. enjoying the pigment. I mean, look at the richness of these colors. I, I love it. I love, this is just, this is me uh, allowing myself to just play. Uh, and you can do this. And it's just so relaxing. There's just, it's just a moment of just peace. It's tranquil. It's, you know, uh, look, look at that. Just getting wild, uh, allowing myself to uh, try to be as cool as Besnick and uh, do some abstract maybe. But even this paper helped a little bit, this real nice rough paper. And so, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I love that. Thank you so much for showing me the updates as well. You're okay, welcome. Real. Yes. Uh, in comparison to what you've just shown us there with that neutral, uh, Tint. Yep. Uh, what, what do you think to um, graphite grey? Oh, that's what that one was made. Uh, the one I just showed. This was oh. all graph. This is all oh. graphite grey. I love graphite grey. This was actually really fun because when I entered this, a lot of people thought I turned in a charcoal drawing oh. into the water media only. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to have some great conversations with people like, yes, look, and then well, it's got graphite in it. No, it's not. It's a synthetic paint that looks very much like graphite. It's got such a broad range of tonality, on not it? Oh, I love it. It's yeah. so richness. And this was also painted not on the most prettiest of days to be out plain air painting. It was mm -hmm. kind of a cold, wet uh, morning. And uh, I was really happy with sometimes when you're out playing air painting in rain or cold, it takes a while to set up. But just as Besnick was showing you, you know, you could just go right onto the surface. Uh, right here is just a full on strength dipped in uh, lovely stick that's just nice and uh, moist and juicy uh, onto there. So there were some questions that were being asked. One is by Sue, and she says, if you draw directly onto the paper and rub with water, would the marks dissolve? And the marks don't always dissolve depending on how, uh, how hard you press, because you're actually pushing watercolor right into the paper. Yes mm -hmm. and no. Oh, sorry. You can show that, John, right now. I am just playing with a few of those. So Bezik's going to show you. For example, I, I'm going to be drawing with tallow green, blue shade. Tallow green, blue shade. I will press very hard in here. Different angles. 
and you can use the brush maybe around it to make some beautiful structure like this, which I really love it. Or you can also dissolve the wall. Let's see how it is going to look. Leave it like this maybe if you like it. Or do some graduation with some more water, which comes really nice. Rose. Frozen. There we go. You're back. No? It's good now. So this was a drawing, and then I put water on top of it, and I think it looks really beautiful. Awesome. You can use it to create texture in that sense, but if, if you really uh, want it, factors about that is uh, how soft your brush is as well if you've got a stiffer brush uh, and you don't want that it, you can like scrub it away down to the this is not very soft uh, brush that i'm using it's soft but not like too soft uh -huh. you can even do some i can, brush can answer to that and also go ahead. Uh, oh, I, are you guys hearing me uh, and seeing yeah. the video or not? It's, it's, it's yeah. kind of yeah, Gabriel, go ahead and show your beautiful, amazing combination. Uh, so you can do a wet and a wet, or I can wet the paper first. And if you are using a stick often, uh, the sticks start to loosen up. I can also use it in the water, even warm water. So this looks like it's rough on the paper, but it's not. So here we go. And I can get working in here where I can make it look like that. So you're not seeing those rough uh, hard spaces on the paper. Oh. Really? Thank you, Sean. Yes. Hey, Martin, how about yours? I think one should one should uh, uh, get into get some few sticks and start doing some experiment, and you immediately will get to know. Okay, these are the th options I can. You can directly work with the sticks. Wait a. Uh, you wet the paper and you can draw something with it. You can do the way we guys are doing, you know, taking the colors uh, from the sticks and pour, uh, putting into paper. I think all these experiments, this one has to do that. And I'm sure all of us will get some more and other good responses. I, I think that's, that's super accurate. That's why I wanted so many of you to show different um, aspects because it kind of, it, it, I think it provokes questions, which is always a really, really good thing. So Mark, what, thank you, Rajat. Mark, what do you have? Welcome. These, these are some lipsticks that I have. And what I did here and I tested them out is basically took the stick and just dipped the end in some water for um, about 20 seconds or so. Then I put it to paper and just let it rub across until it dried out. And as you can see on most of them, are so clear, you can get a definite fine line. That's basically with like an almost dry stick, but the, 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 the pigment comes off beautifully. You can get some definition on it. Awesome. So that's Thank one you. way I'm using them. Awesome. Um, the other way I use them is generally when I'm working with um, abstract and I use the, the palette knife or, or the, um, uh, cards instead of a paintbrush. Um, what I found is that I uh, take the stick and in the ceram ceramic bowl typically um, add a, a, a use a dropper, get some water on there, and then I rub the the stick into the water. I haven't not doing it now obviously, but rub the stick into the water almost like an ink stick and then it forms a paste. And uh, once I got the paste, then I can pick it up with the palette knife and then I can put it on the drawing on the paper. Very cool. 
I've not seen yeah. that. Yeah, very neat. Uh, John, we also have That's Elisa. Nice I didn't hear that, Ethel. Um, we also have Elisa uh, showing her yes. spouse sticks. Thank you, Mark. Elisa can show us yours. So here, Elisa doesn't want to get rid of the dots. She wants to bring that to the forefront. Yes. Very cool. Beautiful, Elisa. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, so what I actually started with a stick, just rubbing it, dipping it in water, rubbing it across. I'm actually using um, canvas panel that's been primed with a watercolor ground. And then I just take the stick, dip it in water, run it across the canvas, spritz with water, and let it do its thing. <laughs> and I just kind of manipulated it a little bit with card, my little plastic straw, my fingers. <laughs> and then once it kind of settled down, I started going in with a uh, lamp black and making the little marks. So that's, that's a good gorgeous. Absolutely. Thank you. Very nice. John? John? Yes. Uh, this week we were watching a, a video, I can't remember where it were, but uh, on, on YouTube, and what they had is a, a little ramekin, you know, one of them little bowls that you have puddings in or whatever, uh, uh, and they cut off a little, a little bit like Mark's thing, what he's just shown us, it cut off a little bit of the stick, and they put it uh, in a little, like, amount of water that were around it and slowly but surely it seeped out into a a, a, a usable liquid oh. facility to paint from and buffy was demonstrating that last friday yeah with it, the cobalt seal yeah I, I thought i'd seen someone do it but that's a really good way of doing it really a small yeah. block uh, surrounded by water and it'll dissolve down and you'll be able to pick it up and do the job. I see people also get shavings from a pencil sharpener and drop the shavings onto their artwork. <clears throat> yeah. Can so, you see my artwork? I was gonna ask you next, Angela, can we see your artwork? Yes. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, the other yeah. camera. Oh. Uh, yeah. Can you take the other camera? Yeah, hang on. Okay, here we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here I, I've i done a, a complete painting uh, with the sticks and um, wetting the brush on the sticks, mm -hmm. wetting the brush, then I got different uh, thicknesses. So this is like the first layer and this is dark when it was drier. And here I wet the stick into the water like that. I wet the stick and then mark it here, similar to what uh, many of you have explained, right? And this, if you can see here, it's like dry marks. Yes. yes. I wetted the, the stick and at the beginning it was very wet, but then it got dry as Mark was explaining. So I used it to, to define some shapes. And because this was at the front, I, I wanted this to be more defined. But then I thought I want to do a bit looser version of that. And I did this, which is the same scene, but uh, wetter in the background and, and a bit looser, you know? With the, I like the, the way that you can make uh, like a dry, almost dry brush stroke with the sticks. And this is, uh, I, you know, you can do in, in any style you want. And I, I like to use them a lot. And here I did some swatching. Uh, this is, in, uh, the paper is very bad, so you can see the texture of the paper. But in any case, the, you see the, the you, you get the full color, and then you get also the dry brush stroke. That's what I like about the sticks. And they're very good for traveling, as Rajat would say. And here I was checking. I thought, will they granulate 
like uh, ultramarine blue, will it granulate like the other color? And as you see, it did granulate. Amazing. You know, with a, with a bit more patience, I would have done more, but it was just a test. Here, this is opera with a pure orange and opera because it was next to the blue, it started granulating too. So I, I really like the, um, I really like these um, sticks. You see, I can wet, I can wet them here, uh, like the others have done in the box. And it's so yeah. intense. Angela? Yes. So Judy asked a question. I see you have opera pink there, because I see it. Um, how yes. do you how do you wake up a stubborn pigment? Because opera pink is probably one of, if it's not, it's probably the most stubborn pigment. Exactly. Thank you and for how, saying that. Yeah, I so thought how, it was me. <laughs> how, do you, <laughs> how do you wake it up? Well, with a lot of patience, I must say. I I continue and continue and continue and then keep keep the water in there for a while. So because as you say, it's a stubborn, it's it's very like very tough. No, very hard. I don't know. It's it's it uh, it takes a while. So you have to be there with a brush uh, and insist. And then it is beautiful. You see how intense it, it was. It was not so intense at the beginning, but I managed yeah. to get the intense version. Right. But yeah. I was with a brush, with a wet brush, and I wetted it again, and then, then I managed. But I suppose I didn't um, wake it up with warm water. Maybe it would have worked better. Has anyone got the experience of wetting it in, in warm water, maybe? Actually, not me. I am trying no? now opera pink, if you guys want yes. to see it. It's opera very pink. easy for me, I don't know. I'm just using normal water. And uh, you, you get dry, thick, right? you get thick, yeah? Look, just like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another possibility. For example, that's also another thing I tried, but because it's very hard, I even scratched the paper, and that I didn't want. Yeah, yeah it's the, the, the particles pack really, really tight. It's just the nature of that particular um, pigment. Yeah, I have to be careful because at the beginning, I, I press very hard, and I, you know, the, the cotton of the paper would, uh, would lift, and I didn't want that. Emma so Tight does this as well. Sorry? The, I use warm water with it. Uh, yeah, maybe it's warm water. Uh, the hematite is also hard, no? It's very compact. Uh huh. Yes. So one of the other questions was about uh, the Primatex. With, when will Primatex come out? There actually are quite a few Primatex in the line. There's a uh, serpentine, there's hematite. Um, quite a few, actually. Hematite. Yeah, so when we're I have a hematite here. Yeah. When we're developing the sticks, we tried to pick the colors that would um, give the most uh, abilities. Uh, that's why there's 51 now. There's another 11 because there's been way more feedback about what other colors might be added to um, complete, complete the line. But they do granulate. I've tried them and they do granulate. Yeah, they're going to behave in the same way that the um, the tubes behave or the pans behave. Because they're all the same pigment, they're all the same binder, they behave the same way. The, the difference um, is the amount of water. So it's much easier to mix quickly an opera pink in a tube than it is an opera pink in a stick. John? Yes. Uh, have you ever looked into, I know it has a different thing in it to hold it together, but have you ever looked into watercolor pencils? Yeah, you know, we've looked at pretty much, we looked at watercolor pencils, we looked at uh, putting them within one of those uh, brushes that you can fill with paint. Um, but it's, it's uh, with our pigments, it's a little bit different, difficult with, with our pigment. The thing is, with pencils, you have to add a, a, a wax to bind it, don't you? 
more often than yeah, you probably do. So that would be that's not something we would use, which would no. kind of cross that out as a product. I'm thinking you could do a, a version of these sticks, but chunky. What do you mean, Ian? Not as long, but maybe two to three times thicker on the curve. Have you ever seen uh, large pastels? They're about an inch and a half in length, but they're probably an inch in in depth. One need to be a little careful about the paper while rubbing that, while doing that particular the way you were saying. At times, the fiber of the paper comes out. So <clears throat> maybe the paper should be wet or something. Otherwise, there could be a damage of a paper. I'm using 300 grams, so I never had that issue. Maybe, probably, thinner paper would go, make this things, Rajat, probably. Yes, please. Uh, Welcome. Uh, have we seen any uh, noticeable differences when we're using different papers with these sticks? I right. think this would happen when you when you use them directly on the paper, like you wet the paper, yeah. and then you 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 go directly with the stick on that. Exactly. Yes. Okay. When you're experienced enough to know about your paper, uh, you you know that when it's wet, you've got to treat it very very carefully, aren't you? Because. Uh, Almost any paper can rip up if you're not treating it with care. Mm -hmm. But that's all down to water control. I'm excited for the electric blue to come out for everybody too. I'm really enjoying the way it just plays on the paper. And uh, it's a gorgeous color. Yes, I'm trying the lavender here, which is awesome. Totally awesome, the lavender. I love this. And the, um, which one is the, the other one? The neutral tint. Absolutely awesome. amazing. So the yep. new ones are going to be the lavender, the iridescent electric blue, the pearlescent white, the neutral tint, burnt yellow ochre, spring green, I see down there in Giovanni's, um, olive green, Mayan orange, Prussian blue, Ivory black and carmen. Towards mm. carmen. I'm using the lavender now. Yeah. Me too. So do we Every have other, it's really it will beautiful. Be, um, by November? I'm going to use the electric blue now. Oh, that's an, another amazing piece. An amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You know, there's a particular bird called pole dancer. You know, name of the bird called pole dancer. The pole dancer bird has the electric blue in their wings. Oh, very cool. Oh. Yes. And the, the bird dances like just like a pole dancer. That's why the, they kept the bird called pole dancer. And John, because I have tried some other color also, but somehow I couldn't achieve that brightness. I'll show you at this moment, it is not there with me. But the, when I got this electric blue, it was just suited for that. Believe me, the shade of the color is so appropriate for the whole dancer. So oh, awesome. Yep. So the one thing that I, I find really phenomenal is if you look at, at least I'm looking at the picture right now, I see Besnick, Angela, Gabriel, Giovanni, I see Mark up on top. Uh, Elisa, all the different ways that artists are using the sticks. One thing that I heard quite a bit is it's a, it's a very spontaneous and creative um, way. I think I forgot which uh, 
demonstrator was talking about, I think even Gabriel said this, sometimes when I find myself in a box, I do something different to break myself out. So if I've been painting with a brush, maybe I'll go to a stick or something that makes you look at the world in a different way, kind of throw it upside down to be able to get past that block. Yes, this is correct. It's kind of like getting out of writer's block, mm -hmm. but a and visual the block. Stick, the stick you can cut in different pieces and put them even in half pounds, no? and, and yep. then it's much lighter. And Angela, there's a request from Buffy. Yes. Uh, for you, can you mix the electric blue with an earth, earthy brown? Maybe a burnt earthy brown? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got the electric blue here. Uh, mix it with uh, burnt we'll amber. It's very earthy, Angela. If you can find burnt yeah. amber. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, this one. You see, it's too earthy. Could not really on Siena, would that be okay? Also, that one. It's a little bit more orange, but it's okay. Look, Queen Siena is how it's looking. Queen Siena. Yeah. Orange, this is Kunakridon Siena. Yes. Kunakridon Siena. Very orangey. Yeah. Angela, could you push your paper over a little bit? Ah, yes. Up? Yeah. Like that? Yes? Yeah. That's good. Can yeah. you see now? Yeah. Okay. I'm going directly on the paper, right? Yes. And now, electric blue. Wow. That's so nice. It's beautiful, no? Yeah. You can see on the edges, uh, that there's some really nice black area just where they're both touching. Yeah, exactly. And it's really nice, created a lovely black, that. Yeah. It's on the very edges of it. You mean here, right? Here, uh, this edge. Where they're both touching one another. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you, Angela. That's beautiful. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for showing your artwork. Thank you for being involved. Um, I'd love to show more artwork that you're doing. So if you ever want to show your artwork, just you know, raise your hand. Be glad to show it. Thank you for, for joining today. Um, tomorrow we have uh, Penny's going to be the demonstrating artist. She's pretty wonderful. Um, I like her, like her fantastic person. So I hope you can join tomorrow. Thank you for joining today. And thank you for all the demonstrations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you John. Bye thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.